Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the flow between two flat parallel plates. So these are our two parallel plates here and here. And we have our um, origin centered in the middle of this plate. We have our x direction in this direction, y pointing vertically. The separation between the two plates is twice h, which is our variable here. And our goal is to figure out what is this velocity profile in the x direction. And what's driving the flow is this pressure drop. So we have some pressure p0 at x equals 0, and we have another pressure, PL, at x equals L, at the end of our pipe. And we want to see how does that pressure drop influence the flow, and what does that flow profile look like between these two flat parallel plates. To solve this problem, we're going to have a few assumptions. So the first assumption is that this is going to be fully developed flow. And fully developed flow basically means that we're not going to have any dependence of the velocity either on time or on the direction of the flow. A second assumption we're going to use is that this is an incompressible fluid, which means that our density here is constant. And this is generally a good approximation for a lot of fluids like water that you might be working with. And a third approximation is that we have very large plates in the z direction. And this will basically mean that we're not going to have any dependence of our flow or our pressure in that z direction. The plates are large enough that we don't really see any of those edge effects. So this basically means no z dependence on v sub x or our pressure. So with this, we can start solving the problem. Usually in these flow problems, we start with the continuity equation. So that is going to be dvx dx plus dvy dy plus dvz dz is equal to 0. Now, since this is a fully developed flow, this term is equal to 0. There's no dependence on the velocity in the flow direction, in the x direction. And we also assume that these are large plates, so this term is also equal to zero. There's no dependence on the velocities in that z direction, and also the velocity in the z direction is equal to zero. So what we're left with here is dvy dy is equal to zero, which means that our velocity in the y direction is a constant. And we can figure out what that constant is just by thinking about the geometry of the problem. If we imagine flow here and the velocity in the y direction has to be a constant, that means it has to be zero because we can't get any flow through our boundary. So the flow at the wall in the y direction must be zero. Therefore, the flow throughout the entire um, between these two plates must also be zero. So if we make these assumptions that we have fully developed flow that let us cancel out this term. And if we make the assumption that we have large plates, which let us cancel out this term, that means that our velocity in the y direction will be a constant and equal to zero. And so this helps us actually make a good approximation of that solution to the problem. The next step in solving these problems is to use the Navier-Stokes equation. So this is a usual, a normal equation in a lot of these flow problems. Most fluid mechanics textbooks or transport phenomena textbooks will have a table of these Navier-Stokes equations in different coordinate systems. We're in the Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system. So that's why we chose this set of equations. And these equations focus on either the velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction, and velocity in the z direction. Though all of the different directions and components are present in these three equations. And I'll also point out that this version of the Navier-Stokes equation is using the dynamic pressure. So this is sometimes written as a script P, like this, which is our dynamic pressure. And this is defined based on its gradient. So the gradient of our dynamic pressure here is going to be equal to gradient of our normal pressure minus rho g with g being a vector that represents the direction of gravity. And basically by writing it in, for, in the form of this dynamic pressure, the script p, we can eliminate the need to focus on gravity. So we don't need to know what direction the, gravity's focus, the gravity will be in. And we can solve the problem once and then no matter which way we tilt these plates, no matter which way gravity is acting, we'll have the same solution. Now the next step is to go through and figure out which terms we can get rid of in these equations. So let's start with the x direction, because that's where the excitement is happening. That's where our flow direction is. 
So we know in the x direction we have a fully developed flow. We can cancel out the term dvx dt because we have no time dependence of our flow. Similarly, we don't have any x dependence of our flow. And we've also found that y and z direction velocities are equal to zero. So this whole left-hand side of the equation goes to zero. Here we will have a pressure term. We actually assumed in our problem statement that we have some different pressure difference across the x direction, and that's what's driving flow. So we need to have that pressure term. In this part of the equation on the right, we know that dvx dx is equal to zero, so the second derivative is also gonna be equal to zero. And we also know there's no dependence on the velocity in the z direction. So we're basically just left with these two terms here for the x direction velocities. Now, if we go through the y and z directions, since we don't have any velocity in either of these directions, these are pretty easy to cancel out. We can cancel out all of these terms. We can also cancel out these terms. So we're just left with one term in each of these equations. And so for these two equations, we can actually find that dp dy is equal to zero and dp dz is equal to zero. And this is one reason why it's nice to use that dynamic pressure because we might have actually seen that in the y direction, we might have a gravitational term, but now we can just ignore that. We end up with there's no dependence on the pressure in the y or z directions. So now I'm gonna scroll down and write out this x direction component of the Navier-Stokes equation so we can try to solve this. So we'll end up with down here. We end up with dp dx plus mu d squared vx dy squared is equal to zero. And one trick we can use here is just solve for each of these two equations. So we get dp dx is equal to mu. First off, we can turn these partial symbols into normal ordinary derivatives because we know that there is no other dependence of our pressure in the y or z direction. So this has to be a normal ordinary derivative. And similarly with the x direction, there's only dependence in the y direction. So we can change these into our standard d's. And the other thing we can do is since we have a term on the left here, which has a derivative with respect to x, and this one, which has a derivative with respect to y, we know that the only way for this equation to work is that if both of these are equal to a constant. So we can basically say this is the same thing as saying dp dx is equal to some constant, which is also equal to mu d squared vx dy squared. And I'm going to call this constant c sub zero. So since the pressure only depends on x and the velocity only depends on y, we can actually solve these two differential equations independently and then put their solutions together to eventually find the solution to this flow problem. So we can start with the easy one. That's d dp dx is equal to a constant. If we integrate this, we get our pressure is equal to c0 times x plus c1. And we can use our boundary conditions to figure this out. I'll save the boundary conditions for later, but here's our starting equation here. And we can similarly have C0 is equal to this term over here. And again, this one we can also solve just by separation of variables. It'll just take two integration steps. So we end up with C0 divided by mu since we have a C0 over in this other equation, we want to keep track of where mu is. dy squared. Our first integration will give us dvx dy is equal to C0 over mu times y plus a new constant, and I'll call this C2. We've already used the name uh, C1. And we integrate one more time, and we will end up with vx is equal to this term c0 over mu y squared. I'll divide by 2 plus c2y plus c3. So 
So we have our two equations here and we have four different integration constants we need to solve. So luckily we have four different boundary conditions. So let's go up to the top and think about our boundary conditions. So for our velocity, we have two different boundary conditions at each of the boundaries. So we'll have a no slip condition here where our velocity in the x direction is equal to zero at both of these two boundaries. And this is because both of these two plates are going to be stationary. So the flow right next to that plate has to also be equal to zero. Our two pressure boundary conditions are already written down here. That's P at, at x equals zero is equal to P zero and P at x equals L is equal to P L. So as a first step, let's solve our pressure equation and then we'll use that in our velocity equation. Our dynamic pressure is equal to C0 times X plus C1. And we have our boundary conditions, which are at X is equal to zero, P is equal to P0, X is equal to L, or P is equal to P sub L. And notice that no matter which direction we're in, these normal pressures are gonna be equal to our dynamic pressure because that, because that gravity term will cancel out. If we solve this, let's set x equal to zero first. If we set x equal to zero, this term here will go away. So we end up with our pressure is equal to P zero is equal to C one. And then we can use the other boundary condition to solve for C sub zero. So in that case, P L is equal to C sub zero times L plus P sub zero. If we solve for C zero, we end up with our pressure difference, PL minus P0 divided by L. Now based on our problem, if we think about what PL is and what P0 is, we can actually understand what that sign is gonna be. Our pressure at PL is gonna be over here, downstream of our pressure at P0. So assuming we drew our arrow here correctly and we're having some flow going from left to right, our P0 is going to be greater than PL. So what I'm going to do here is rewrite this as a delta P, but it'll be negative so that we get our signs correct. And this time I'll use our script P, delta P over L, just so that we're clear. So this is going to be negative delta P over L, where our delta P is going to be P sub zero minus P sub L. Now we can write out the full pressure equation here too, but really all we need to do to solve for the velocity profile is knowing this constant C sub zero. So what we can do is just plug in this delta P over L term for our C zero right up here in our velocity profile and then solve for that. So I will write down our velocity equation right here and then plug in C zero. So our velocity in the X direction is gonna be equal to a negative delta P over two mu L times Y squared. So that term is already set up, already done, plus C two times Y plus C three. And these C two and C three again are arbitrary constants that came up, came up in the integration. And now we can use our boundary conditions to solve for those two constants. So here we have our no slip boundary conditions. So VX is equal to zero at Y equals H and VX is equal to zero at y equals negative h. So we can plug in these two equations and see what we end up with and try to figure out how we can best solve for C2 and C3. So we get zero is equal to our constant over here and plug in h squared for this top equation. And for our bottom equation, we're gonna use y is equal to negative h. A trick we can use to solve this is to simply add these two equations together. That'll cancel out these two terms here in the middle if we add the two equations together. So that'll give us two times our delta P over two mu L H squared. Uh, this is a negative two and this is a two C three is equal to zero. Those twos cancel out there. They just came from adding these two equations together. So we end up with C three is equal to 
this expression right here. And now we can plug this in to our equation here for C2, to solve for C2. And what you'll notice is that this expression here is just the same as this expression right here. So if we were to plug this into either of these two equations, we'll actually find that those terms will cancel out with one another and we'll be end up with C2 is equal to zero. And now we can just plug this in to solve for our velocity profile and figure out what that is. So if we plug that in, we'll end up with Vx is equal to this expression right here. And this is good enough. This, this will tell us everything we need to know, but we can actually simplify it a little bit to get a little bit more understanding of what's going on. So if we were to pull out of this expression, uh, delta p over 2 mu l times h squared will end up with this expression right here. So this is a nice way of writing this because the expression on the outside here has units of velocity. You can check that if you want to. And the expression inside the parentheses here is dimensionless. So one thing I like to do to check to make sure we've done this problem correctly is to see does it st still satisfy the boundary conditions. So again, at y is equal to h or y is equal to minus h, this expression in the parentheses will be equal to zero. So that'll give us that vx is equal to zero. So it does satisfy our boundary conditions. Let's also check that it has the right sign. So if we set y is equal to zero, which is at the middle of our pipe, then this expression in the parentheses right over here will give us one. And so that'll give us a, basically the maximum value for our um, velocity profile. And we right away know what that maximum value is gonna be. It's just gonna be this uh, set of constants outside of the parentheses. So this makes some intuitive sense. Let me go back up to that drawing. If we know that we have zero velocity on the walls of these pipes, and we have some flow in the middle, I guess it, would, it might make sense that we'll have a maximum value in the center of our pipe. And we can actually draw what this flow pro profile might look like. So I'll draw it out over here. It's a parabolic profile where our velocity is gonna be maximal in the center and it's going to end up at zero on each of the edges of our pipe. In these problems, you'll sometimes be asked for the average velocity. In order to do that, we can basically take this flow pro profile and then take the integral over y. So we can take our average velocity, I'll call this u. Our average velocity u is gonna be equal to one over 2h, the full height, times the integral over negative h to positive h, vx dy. And we can basically solve this integral and then figure out what our average velocity is. If you want a slightly simpler version, since our flow is symmetric across y equals zero, we can actually rewrite this as one over h, integral from zero to h of vx dy. And then if you solve this integral, I'm not gonna solve it out right now. If you solve this integral, you'll end up with h squared delta p over three mu l, two thirds v max. In this video, we solved for the velocity profile through a set of two parallel flat plates. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.